John getting his rocks off early when it comes to uh, Man. Laramie Tunsil in particular, but the penalties in general. And I think uh, the law firm of, of of Lopez, Fig, and Atatula have come to a decision. Lopez, Atatula, and Fig is what I said. Yeah. What go with. I, like the, <laughs> I like the punch of Fig at the end. Lopez, Atatula, and Fig. We, we, it's one of two decisions, right? It's just straight off the top, uh, Tunsil gets benched, or... It's Laramie Tunsil, you are taking every single snap. We're taking away your veteran days. You don't get to relax no more. You got to put in work to get yourself together. We are take, You're taking all the snaps. I mean, that'll hurt for development of your other guys, but, it, hey, man, you need to get in all the work possible. Uh, all those luxuries, hey, maybe even strip you of your captaincy. I know that that's tough because that was voted on by the players, but as of right now, you're not exhi- uh, exhibiting the, yeah. the qualities of a captain, right? Uh, so those are the two options that we have put up. And I'm sure you can determine uh, which one was put up by uh, myself and which one was put up by John Lopez uh, after our conversation. I came in hot, Figgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had that fire. I'm just sick and tired of it, as people like to say. And some people, just real quick, and we'll get into this offense because yeah. it does tie in with the offense. Uh, some people, uh, like our, our uh, lovely uh, program director, I don't think he's ever been called lovely, uh, Parker came in during the break and was saying, well, no, kind of what you're talking about, and also, well, he just – and some texters are saying this. Well, he just appreciates sitting out. Okay, well, if he says, you know, no big deal, then you have your answer. You have your answer about Laramie Tunsil and, and how it, what, you know, how he really works and what drives it. I, I, we'll get back to this because uh, I've just been all night, all morning, and then when I saw his quote, I was like, all right, I'm going in on this cat. I mean, uh, he, can, he can squish me like a grape if he wants to. Uh, he can get mad if he wants to. I hope he does get mad. Hope he does get mad because that's maybe that's what needs to get him going. So uh, we transition from that to uh, an offense in general that was a little lackluster. We we set this up as the possibility for uh, this this game proved as a test for your Texans, particularly offensively, and that test did not seem like it was passed on offense. Now, of course, a large part of this was you had a lot of penalties that put them in bad situations, but also you had stuff like this. Split back, C.J. in the gun. C.J. with pressure. Out to the right. He's going to be sacked by Van Ginkle. Back at the 18-yard line. Yep, and that that basically does it. Yep. You just want to get the halftime now. Let the clock run out and just go in and press the restart button. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that highlighted for me one of the issues that we've seen with Bobby Slowick. But I think, look, man, there's, a, there's an acknowledgement. Bobby Slowick is very talented at what he does. He's... A uh, fantastic young uh, coordinator that a lot of people have uh, some some you know interest in for bigger and better things. But with that being the case, like I feel like we need a Bobby Slowick conversation because one we of the do. things that obviously happened, I I made the decision and the smart one I believe to come up to the studio and watch the game with the five fellows that do pre and post game here because mm-hmm. um, I would rather sit and watch a game ar- uh, around some former players and get some of their perspectives. And one of the things that jumped off the screen and leapt out of uh, Clint Sterner's uh, heart. Well, blocking schemes doesn't make sense, mm-hmm. right? Like, they, very often, quite a few times, you had the likes of Cade Stover or Dalton Schultz one up with a defensive end. Oftentimes, their best defensive end, uh, <laughs> Jonathan Grenard. You're familiar with him. Oof. And it, it went just the way that you would expect. A second-year tight end uh, or just generally dudes that are not like maulers at tight end, like mm-hmm. they're Rob Gronkowski up here with defensive ends. And it it kept happening again with the same thing we're talking about with the uh, with the pass blocking right or, or not pass block with the penalties. Mm-hmm. It kept happening over the course of the game, which yeah. made, uh which made it more evident that this was not just hey a problem in setting protection like I had you know been concerned about uh, last week. Yeah, this was a decision on how they decided to block, and it pointed to there might be some issues when it comes to Bobby Slowick and his inexperience that are showing themselves against more experienced. Uh, defense or defensive coordinators. Yeah, the the offensive line scheme, uh, the blocking scheme, uh, with uh, with the tight ends uh, at fullback and everything, it, it really doesn't have a lot to do. It has some, of course, uh, with Chris Strasser, the offensive line coach. That's Bobby Slowick's scheme. Like the scheme is Bobby Slowick's. How they're going to block things up. You know, Strasser is more the the nuts and bolts. Let's do this. Fix it uh, one way or another. Although, hey, Approach Chris Chaucer, your 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 no, he's not off the hook. Your, your tackles are jumping off sides and not lining up right. But but yes, but yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, you know, Bobby Slowick bought the groceries of this scheme. You know, he he's the guy that bought the groceries. And the reason I think we have to have this conversation and are having this conversation about this offense is not just like they got blown up, but he has. I mean, Bob, you spent 188 million dollars on the offensive line. 
You know, you 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 got you got 188 million dollars invested in the offensive line. Oh, okay, how about a receiver? Okay, we'll get you Steph, Stephon Diggs. Okay, how about extending Nico so he's happy? Okay, we'll extend Nico. All right, how about a running back, a really big time badass running back? You got it. Who, to be fair, yeah. not, you know, injured uh, in this. Well, sure, not available. Sure, person. but but we got you, Joe Mixon, buddy. So he's got 188 million dollars on the offense, uh, offensive line. Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins extended, Joe Mixon. Uh, so yes, Bobby Slowick, you got all the groceries. It's your scheme. Let's make it work. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things that we talked about on Friday is I, I felt like quick game would have been really helpful in trying to neutralize that uh, that pass rush. And when they did deploy it, it felt like it was it was useful, right? You were able to get guys out in space, uh, Nico Collins out in space. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that there was one that was thrown to Xavier Hutchinson that uh, he ultimately didn't catch. But I felt like there was things like that that I don't know was fully utilized early enough. Now, to be fair, in that point as well, you had the defensive ends just getting their hands up and not batting balls yeah. down that, that kind of negated some of those things. But uh, that all of that still stemmed from, in my estimation, uh, starting at the foundation, your offensive line, w- whether it was through penalties or just like not being set up to, to pass block, right, where you yeah. have a, a possession where Dalton Schultz is on the left side blocking Jonathan Grenard by his lonesome, and then you have three linemen almost uh, stuck on a defensive tackle. Like It feels like that yeah. – the way that you went about the, the the primary game planning of this was set up incorrectly, and so you did not give yourself the max might in the course. Of yeah, you're you're absolutely right. And and when you get when you couple you know what they did on the offensive line and the pre snap penalties with what you just mentioned, uh, that's how you get 13 out of 14 third downs were third and seven or longer. Now that is certainly understandable that you're going to struggle, but 13 out of 14. That points to Bobby, too. You got to have something. Now, listen, the, the other thing that they did uh, in game is they they moved they, they they moved Stephon Gilmore with Nico Collins. I don't know if Nico Collins is, is going to be the, the number one wide receiver all year long, but the Vikings thought he was. So that's how Stephon Diggs got 10 catches, and that's how – but you have to be able to exploit that when you see it in game. Oh, wow. You know, they're, they're traveling Stephon a lot, not, not exclusively, but a lot – with Nico Collins, uh, that's how you got to make the adjustment if you're if you're Bobby Slowick. Yeah, um, and I, in the course of this, I do wonder if something that's going to pop up more over time is some play action. Um, I know that there's some people that are like, oh, the run game isn't all that good. And I don't, uh, over time, we found that, mm-hmm. hey, man, the, the, the use of play action is going to be useful regardless of if you run the ball effectively or not because what it does is it freezes those linebackers for a split second, and especially with the wide receiving core that you have, giving C.J. Stroud an opportunity to just – have a have a little bit of a split second, a little bit of space yeah. in that mid, in, in, uh, middle of the field, and I just wonder if that could have been utilized more. And now that I'm just going into full speculation, second <laughs> guessing. But one thing that did become, I felt, was at least very evident, without getting too far into the X's and O's of it, was there was a disparity when it came to the coaching acumen, or maybe just like on this day, and without talking about the full uh, strength of it them some looks when it comes to hey man come back around and being Mm -hmm. a head coach again and I think that that was an interesting um juxtaposition to Bobby Slowick who had who was golden boy his past coaching search even though he ultimately decided to come back Mm -hmm. and I imagine that some of these some of this is the reasons why he wants more opportunity to work on it however it's going to need to show itself over the course of this season that you are working on it you're getting better make no mistake about it as much as this was a frustrating game and we've you know we're really just kind of getting into the frustrations the Vikings are the real deal, and Brian yeah. Brian Flores is the real deal. But that, 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 uh, but that's, that's no excuse if you think you're the real deal. That's again, yeah. This is these are the waters that you are now playing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right? Like we have moved from the wading part of the pool to, yeah. to six feet deep. Right? Can you swim? And we're seeing the various ways in which the Texans can swim a little. They swim like me. Right. Like I, I will be alive. I'm not moving around too fast. Right. Like don't you will never confuse me with Michael Phelps. But right now, as of this moment, right, it, it is it is it is just just enough to tread water, just enough to keep yourself. Alive. And, and, and that's a great analogy. Yeah. Uh, and, and let's not mistake. Let's not forget this either. When you talk about scheme and blocking schemes and all that, uh, CJ Stroud is on pace to be sacked 56 times this year. Let me say that again. Fifty. Six times he's on good? pace to be. That is not good. Okay. <laughs> that is not good. That is how you get a quarterback hurt or beat up. So, yeah, I, I, I think that those are the things. Those are things that we're starting to see when it comes to Bobby Slowick. And I, I do want to see that get significant. And not only want to, needs to. Yeah. It needs to, again, for the, the level of team, the caliber of team that you anticipate this being. 
those things you're against defenses of this caliber. You need to be able to set your protection to, to have a baseline for what you're doing. You need to be able to see the defense, and even though they pr- uh, pose challenges, you need to be able to find ways to get those things executed. And unfortunately, as of right now, you haven't done that. Um, but yeah, Bobby. We, we want to see it, and that's mm-hmm. on top of the fact that – and look, I don't know how much this was going to happen anyways. We know the running game, especially run blocking, has not been uh, up, to the sta- up to the task or up to the level that we would hope. But uh, there was frequently, frequently times where the Texans were getting hit behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage to, yeah. to, no, ga- uh, to no end, right? The Texans' ground game struggled to create space uh, from scrimmage. Eight of 11 design runs, all carriers were contacted behind the line of scrimmage in this game. Not, Way too much. Yeah, not Way not not much. what you want.